Very well done by Mad. A couple slip ups. We'll see how that does going into the rest of the series. But you can see how pumped they are. Look how they explode out of their seats in the jungle top. They're feeling super good. El Yoya, massively pumped. You know how much this means to him because he's carrying these rookies along for, for the ride here. And, and if they can beat G2, that's going to be a huge, huge confidence boost. But beware. This level of adrenaline is going to kick up. You've got some downtime, 15 minutes before the next game. You have to rewind, bring yourself back down, bring yourself back to the optimized state where you are nervous a little bit, but you are anxious to play well, but not on overdrive. Uh, and we'll see whether or not they're able to do it. There were a couple mistakes. We saw that the roller coaster ride can kind of do that to you. We'll see whether or not they end up with a big plummet for the rest of the series. MVP, an international playboy, bot lane. Those two are getting lots of fans in the East. Hans, Hansama has been likened to a pop group superstar with his new do. If you remember, he used to have like the bangs and the thick glasses, and now instead he's, he's gone with the... Uh, kind of looks like Kane in, from Heartsteel, right? Confidence is a hell of a drug, right? It can, it can raise you to levels that you didn't know were possible. Just being able to play with complete confidence. Uh, we'll see whether or not they come back with the confidence in this game. Now, they do have a, a big changes in the draft. We saw Zach prioritized, but the synergies are much, much worse this game. All right, now they're the team with the Senna. Senna has, again, like we talk, spoke about, that awful laning phase and is going to get pressed in by Varus. Azir versus LeBlanc, there's a lot of kill pressure for LeBlanc. Azir will take that over for team fights later. But looking at the power picks here, we've got Maokai, Varys, and Kasante all being picked. I don't have Senna that high on my tier list, especially not as a farming champion. I would much rather see her in the support role with, with a beefy champion like Maokai taking the CS. Someone that can do well with the gold, does well in the laning, and, uh, and we don't have that. Here, we have another farming Senna, so I'm a little bit worried for Mad in this second game. All right, look at jungle pathing. We have both champions starting our Raptors, which is very common in pro. Not only do you open up the ribbon pathing, but you also have the full red side uh, resets before grubs, which allows you to get the maximum amount of XP. You can get to grubs level 5 uh, right on spawn. Uh, some champions more than others. All right, big hook here. Sorry, I shouldn't say big hook. Mickey, look at this aggressive posturing. Look at this. They know that if they can grab minion aggro, and because they already did grab minion aggro and they pulled the wave to themselves, they've got the push. So now they're willing to hold on to this because they're going to get the level spikes. And now, as always, take the maximum. When you get a small lead, express it to the maximum amount and exploit them as hard as possible. And you see huge chunks. Alvaro, Alvaro should not be presenting a target at all in this situation and now we're going to get this this gank path that we used to see a lot week one and two of the split that we haven't seen as much which is maokai pathing from southern quadrant into the eastern and looking for ganks uh, not only is he available for the dive here but he's also in position to take camps away and because of this tremendous lead they can actually lend mickey x into the eastern quadrant and they're just winning everywhere this is a huge problem nar is not going to be able to get enough off of Cassante. He does have this CS lead on the crashing wave. There's a formidable level one, but as soon as you get the mobility and the plated steel caps on Cassante, he's going to swing this matchup. Kind of kind of like the Poppy Jace sort of relationship where you might go down 20 or 30 CS early, but as soon as you build your tank item, you're going to be more than happy. So now we have LeBlanc taking huge winning trades against Azir. You have bot lane crashing a wave and getting an invade off so now you're looking at g2 already owning five eighths of the map right bot side is their strength this is again like we said the weakness of having a senna lane ever means that you basically have to forfeit this side of the map and uh and now for scowy down teleport is looking for more trades this is exactly what caps wants this is something very important to do when you're looking at what to do post teleports you want to take as many aggressive trades as possible, right? You'd, you'd like them to be at zero resources 
as you return back, as you return back to lane, you still have your teleport. Right, so every trade that you take is just a permanent fixture. You're reducing their HP and their their mana, reduce all of their resources, so that when you do go for the teleport, you're just going to be that much stronger. Now with a kill and a rebounding wave, we'll see if LeBlanc uses this opportunity. We might may, wait a moment. Hold on for the fight. On Sama saying I can take this fight, turning on champions only toggle. Mickey X turn using the. Uh, Revive there to stay alive means that Varus is going to wipe this. Let's see if he flashes in. Yep, there he goes. You're flashing in. Basically, Senna's in a walking bush, so you just want to get inside. If you don't have a ward to do it, then you just flash inside. Let's see. This wave should crash. Let's see if he greeds a little bit for a touch. Oh, he's just inting. Look at this. Beautifully done. So nice. This, I just want to highlight this for a moment because this is worth shouting out. Hashtag strat chat. Uh, we're going to talk about this. 503, you can put it in the timestamp. Look at all of the effects of inting there. For one, look how quickly he got back to lane. All right, he's respawning in five, six seconds as opposed to finding a safe spot and then recalling, which could be 15 or 20 seconds away. Uh, not only that, but he pulls the minions into the, into the turret. So now he's going to ensure that the wave doesn't sit out here and gets frozen. This is such a high level play and it is the perfect play for this situation. You have the timing down, even if you were going to give a kill to this support coming right back to lane, it'd still be worth it. Or right, even if Alvaro were right here, if he were using a uh, double dredge line and it looks like he might've had access to two, uh, didn't use the second one. So maybe missed out on experience. I don't think he ever misses out on the kill here. But by going in, not only are you getting back faster, but you're ensuring the crash. Now, Alvaro's job is to actually skip ahead of the minions, grab this next wave, stop it from crashing, and you can even use your dredge line on one of the melees to pull it back out of turret range to try to preserve some semblance of a freeze. Because as it, as it lies right now, we're talking about a tremendous lead, two kills in the pocket of the Varus, plus a wave that's coming back to him, which would be a checkmated situation. Anytime you have a lead and a favorite wave state that's coming back to you it's checkmate there's nothing the enemy team can do so i just want to pause and give that huge shout out for a perfect uh, perfect decision super gang <laughs> you see that sweat that bead of sweat that nerve the tickle right here on the on the edge of the forehead indicator of stress Someone might be feeling like, oh, shoot, I've left, I've let my team down or something like this. You never, again, never want to let that creep in into your mind. Just focus on the task at hand. What do I do next? How do I, what, what can I accomplish next? Never, never give any moment to, oh, my goodness, I've let my team down or oh, I'm playing like. Uh, I'm playing off or just any other tree. It just doesn't matter. You need clarity of thought. Every single thought needs to be dedicated to the task at hand. So we'll see if Supa avoids tilt, right? Tilt plays might look like overextending for a play, trying to reach for a kill that's not there, uh, trying to call in for resources when you don't actually need them. That's one that we won't necessarily see, uh, but we'll obviously be there if it comes up. I like this play forward by Frascawi, trying to say, all right, you're dashing from this position. Let me get on top of it because I'm getting ready for my level six spike because I hit six on this wave and you have yet to hit it. We have no flash available for Maokai. So they call off the play. Misses the cannon. A little bit of an overplay there by Caps, although it does necessitate the reaction. So it's not awful. Azir ultimate also will be down for two minutes, which means LeBlanc has multiple chances to get her alt empowered Qs and Ws off. See whether or not she opts for fast wave clear uh, or whether or not she wants for more assassination potential. All right, they do get the push and bop, but Varys is actually going to be able to hold this. Now they're calling over resources for this dragon. I hate this. This, this is a loss of tempo. Senna's going to get two stacks off of this, but what are you giving up in return? All right, Nautilus needs to turn this into a roam timer, otherwise it's it's completely unplayable. Uh, Varus opts to try to turn the wave. He doesn't want to hold it into a freeze. He says, I know they're going to recall. 
after this play, I want to start preparing my push and I want to start pushing up. Now, Senna's forced into, into an awkward position where she needs to play passively, which means that Nautilus doesn't get to get his roam. The correct play is actually to still roam, right? See if the enemy team is willing and able to execute a dive versus your laner. Go get grubs, go get something off the map that will allow you to scale, right? Especially that first grub. That first grub you get will not notify. You can smite it. It's super easy to get one grub. And that guarantees that enemy team does not get six, right? Because what you're really trying to go into damage control, you want to make sure enemy team does not get six grubs because if they do, they just stand in front of turrets with their lead and they just walk at you for the rest of the game. That is one of the easiest uh, paths to victory in the patch. Uh, currently much, much easier than trying to get Dragon Soul, which doesn't even win you the game. Whereas Void Grubs actually do actually win you the game. They break turrets, right? There's a huge, huge gap in between the quality of these buffs and what they're giving to you. If you get six buffs, it's as good, six grubs, it's on the similar tier as having four dragons. Not quite the soul, all right? The soul would be slightly better, only slightly better. But what happens is you end up getting soul in games where you are winning. It is not creating the win you can also get grubs in games where you are winning and it actually helps you to win much more than two dragons or three dragons so in a case where you're super far behind with senna and you're looking for senna azir to scale totally totally apt to go in use smite grab a grub and leave exit stage top <laughs> right or exit stage right left i don't care just get in get out you don't need to pick a fight you're just trying to go in there and get to the minimum but by getting the minimum you're ensuring that the enemy can't do it not only that but you will have the timer this is something that they're discussing whether or not to change every other big buff in the game it gives a global timer right that's been this way for four years now five years five years man it's been a long time maybe six years it used to be that when you took a dragon, you could then chain your dragons together because the enemy team didn't have a perfect timer down and you could just show up, boom, burst the dragon, leave. You can do that with first void grub. The first void grub has its own independent timer. It died. So it's going to look to respawn, right? We're going to get that respawn timer without notifying the enemy team. So taking one and leaving, the actual effects of it are multiplied. And when you're looking at a game where you don't want them to spawn the extra void mites, taking one void might here and then taking another one four minutes from now is actually a tremendous effect because giving them four stacks of extra turret damage is so much less than the fifth stack where they actually get the extra void might because that grub when it shows up onto the turret you're talking about an extra creature drawing aggro it's drawing aggro before the minion wave so your minion wave is alive longer your cannons alive longer also it's allowing you to go in and and threaten more damage earlier to the turret because you can go in it's going to tank up the, up those first shots so the effects of having multiple grubs are exponential getting those two if you're the team that's behind walking in smiting to steal a grub and then getting back out is a huge huge advantage now we're starting to get to that point. Uh, Nar is still taking over this lane. You can see that he's brought the Swifty, so he's got the maximum amount of pressure that he can put into this lane. But the Bami Cinder being used to help clear ways for the Cassante, as soon as he gets this plated steel caps and then finishes I am what I imagine is going to be... I, I actually don't know what he's going to go next. I would have assumed Kanic Rooker, so he can try to get in the middle of the fight with the Azir and the Zac, uh, but ends up just going all out on the guy. Because, Kisante, why not? You want to try to build Trinity Force? Okay, I'll punish you with my better level 6. Just take this fight to you. And even even the ultimate from, from Senna, not enough to swing that fight. Now, we were talking about potential sources of tilt. Good decision trees, whether or not you make the perfect decision. Confidence allows you to make perfect decisions. Tilt makes you, makes you much more vulnerable to panicked ones. That Senna ultimate... Was it ever going to be enough? We saw that it just hit and it still wasn't good enough, right? Cassante in All Out is so, so strong. And, you know, it's actually funny. Uh, Freak just uh, released his patch rundown video and spent over 10 minutes on just Cassante. 
and talking about the changes and how unreadable this champion is. You, The animation cancels, queuing during E, the speed of the dashes, what's going on. This champion, even though they tried to simplify it, is still too strong. And the thing is, they don't realize how strong it actually is because it's hard to see it. You don't see how strong Cassante. You have to actually slow down your replay to half speed, sometimes even quarter speed, to see all the animations that Cassante is using. And we're just in this spot where you you have a a tier gap here. Nar versus Cassante. Nar is up twenty CS and has the kill, and has plates, and is looking and is looking to dominate, and has an HP lead, and Cassante's low on on health. That is a misstep right there by Nar. Certainly walking forward, suboptimal. Taking a lot of health as you're coming out of Mega. Certainly not what you want to do. But, uh, like, look at that play. Senna ult's not even coming close to changing that. And Broken Blade's like, yeah, business as usual. I do this on Cassante every game. You can check me out in game three. I'll, I'll try to do it again. And this, and this is why, with this iteration of, of Cassante, there just aren't good answers. Right? The, the counter picks aren't even counter picks anymore. And you see him squash him again. This game's over. This game's done. The counter picks you used to have Cho'Gath and Garen, but now based on the higher threshold where you have less inti ultimates, you also have no immediate counterplay from champions with executes. So Cho'Gath and Garen used to take you from your all out and say, oh, all right, fine. I will silence you and execute you. And now because of the higher threshold and the higher single target sustained leeching that's going on, Cassante basically lives at 60% against anyone that can't 100 to 0 him, and it doesn't matter that you have the low stats because he's got enough kill pressure. That was on Bami Cinder, guys. Now, Broken Blade flexing all over the map. We have a uh, no mana Senna using the mana on the E, which means that she's going to die to LeBlanc here. Would not have used the flash. We talked about tilt decisions. There it is, another one. Supa rookie riding the roller coaster had a super high octane early game last game and then made a mistake. How is it going to affect them? Made another mistake in this game. Are they riding the roller coaster? How can you bring them up? So if you're a coach, if you're a coach, you have to realize this moment. You have to see it happening. You have to give them confidence boosts. You can say things like, just be you. You, we don't need more than you. We don't need super super. We just need super, right? Be you. We can do this. Get them to rehearse that I can do this mentality. And, and one of the simplest mantras you can use, I can do this five times. I can do this flat. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this, right? You can inflect Five different ways, once with no inflection, and then once where you inflect on each of the different words. All five of those carry meaning, and it gives you some time. You notice it takes me about 15 seconds to do that. That's enough time to bring down my stress. I'm also really, I'm, uh, reassuring myself. I'm building up my own confidence. So giving a champion who or a player who's stressing too much, they're, they're kind of falling off and tilting, give them positive mantras, positive feedback, inner talk, let them be mindful of the situation. Okay, it is what it is. I got stressed and I didn't play well and I made some bad decisions. That's not who I am. I can do this, right? You need that person to go through and you want to help them go along on that journey so that they can dig themselves out, right? Or in, or in a case, a better, a better way, instead of trying to dig themselves out when they're digging their own hole and they end up just digging deeper, you just say, all right, let's just realize we're in a hole we can we can beat this all right let's first find out how did we get down here okay it's by not being ourselves we made some tilted decisions that's okay it is what it is it's a high stakes high octane situation but you know what we're one one in the finals we can win this if we play our game playing your game gonna be a little bit tough for the rest of this one though Right. This is a good opportunity to just start getting into healthy mindsets for the next game. This Trinity Force Nar is going to get punished. The amount of damage in the game 
uh, especially when, when you don't have armor runes the way that you used to, this build is much squishier than it used to be. And it relied, they clearly relied on this being a split push source of winning. And Nar's just not that good at that anymore, right? He's fine, he's solid even, but Trinity Force Nar, you have to recognize how difficult it's going to be because when you're mini, you are just a walking shut, no, I won't even say shut down, a walking bounty. All right, Malachi knocking Zach out of the air to start that fight. They get this. Renata does bite the dust, but LeBlanc's going to continue forward. Also, uh, Broken Blade's going to be completely unstoppable. Nothing that Azir can do. So they just kite backwards. And here's the situation. You didn't build Tanky on Nar. And so now your team kind of only has Zach. You know, now you're off tank Nar, you know, bruiser build. Nautilus doesn't have the resources to... to be able to withstand the damage up front here. So there is no way out for them, right? You're just going to have G2 steamrolling through these fights. There is no way for Senna to, to even play and Azir. Senna and Azir are relying on you to have a healthy front line, and you're just not going to have access to that with builds like this. All right, so here's the Zac. Hi, wow. All right, so actually, Mickey, a little bit of a miscommunication there. It does get the fast kill on Zach, but Mickey and Yike both used their Q to stop that. Uh, we do see the W being used to try to keep Han Samo alive, but all those resources being expended, the flank, everything about it, the whole time, how much damage does did Azir and Senna do? Right? Like, you can just you can just evaluate how the fights are going based on how those two champions are able to deal their damage, and they just really can't. Now, it is on G2 to progress this game. LeBlanc, Varus will get outscaled by Senna. Her attack range will get massive, and if they are allowed to get items on Nar that will allow him to survive in these fights a little bit longer, then they could have problems. So G2, it is their prerogative. Uh, but they need to press the tempo in this game, right? They're going to be looking to close out. They shouldn't have any issues with it. 6k gold lead, right? This is a tremendous amount. They can get anything that they want on the map. And most likely, this is just going to turn into a 20-minute Baron. Uh, plus some pushes to try to get those last two inners. Try to turn that into a 4,000 extra gold uh, for them. And then they'll use a 10k gold lead to try to uh, push into the base. That's how I would play it. We'll see what, what they do with this. Whether or not they leave Broken Blade on split pushing with no teleport. Uh, I'm kind of surprised. He should just tap this wave, allow it to slow push, build up, and then rejoin his team. It looks like he's going for the flat, fast push, and they're trying to punish the invade. Now, here it is. Ooh, they try so hard to get this. They say Broken Blade can't come here. He's got no teleport. Let's try to find our window. We end up using everything, including the Zac passive, to not get the kills. Now, Zac and Senna die anyways, and this game is well and truly over. Four for zero. Sorry, four for one. LeBlanc does bite it, but she gets all that damage out. She does not care whatsoever. Interesting from here from Azir. Crypt Bloom being picked up. Now, while I like Crypt Bloom a lot as an item, I think it's one of the best items in the game. When you're buying it second in a situation like this, right? That's not investing in your Senna and your Azir. You need to be investing in yourself in these games where you've got one carry AD, one carry AP. They may be considering that NAR is still, like the plan is for NAR to still be a carry, uh, but that's just not the reality of this game, right? It's not the game you want to be in. It's the game you're in. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of a second item Void or Blightning Jewel being picked up right off the bat. I'd like to get something that's more centralized about your own personal damage so that you are able to get the kill, and then you can go for the Crypt Bloom third. Uh, so I'd much rather see Lich Bane here, but it looks like it's going to be Crypt Bloom. Azir will pick up one more camp, I think. Yeah, she's probably pinging. Yeah, almost definitely. Hey, I've got, I'm 80 gold short. Let me pick up the wolves, please. No? Not. All right, they're coming over. They're trying to defend. Defending is, is a, a huge punt. Why would you try to defend here? You're, you're down 10k gold, right? And whether or not they see that, they know they're down 14k plus structures, plus dragons, uh, plus baron. You're never, ever, ever defending this baron push. So why even try? 
I like the play right there by Alvaro. You see that? He actually did a predictive. They had a ward over the wall. So he's sitting there waiting to see an animation from Caps. I wonder if Caps emoted. And if he did, then we're talking about a guy playing on a whole nother level. And that is something that's not actually as uncommon as you might think at this level. You see champ like they all know that Blitzcrank has like this motion right before he throws his hook. And there's an emote that you can use that does the same, ha, ha, you know, right? It does the same thing and it makes a sound effect and it can draw reactions from your opponents, right? If you know that your spot's warded and you're trying to jump over there, obviously you would always do that, right? You would say, I, let me put out an emote. Let me do something that triggers a response add to their mental stack right anything that can add to their mental stack if you have such champion mastery that you can add in those extra extra actions without any cost to your performance but it's also adding on to their mental stack you're going to end up profiting by a tremendous amount was that all right mickey keeping them alive and then yike using his w right on cooldown to uh, disjoint, one of the few abilities in the game that disjoints like that to stay alive. But yeah, like it's such a nice play. I, I almost want to go back and, and see. I'll kind of get a timestamp. We're looking at probably at 243, about 242. Is that Siege? 242.17. We'll take a look after the game. All right, but the game at hand, 12K gold lead. We talked about it. They got the Baron. They turned it into two uh, inner structures being dead, but also because it was a failed attempt at defending. That means that they also got the middle inhibitor. Now that they're going to be able to split the team up, uh, they don't have teleport from Cassante. He actually used it just now to get back onto the map, which means that they think they have enough of a lead to just progress. So Caps is going to ideally turn this into a slow push in the top lane, which just means from the state that you're in right now, just killing one caster. Uh, but bottom lane is pushed up enough that they might want to kill all three. We'll see what she does. He's at 202, 205. You should leave. 206, 207. All right. So he stayed for the whole wave. Watch what this does to the wave, though. All right. This, this is a slight mistake. All right. Your wave, which has been slightly damaged. Now your team is winning, so it is going to still be stronger than the enemy wave. It's going to stack up here, but it's fighting here as opposed to here. And if it were fighting here, your next wave would stack up and then you'd be able to go three waves deep and it would take longer for that wave to get to you. Now, because they fast pushed, this wave is going to continue forward. It's just walking up to a spot where Supa could clear this, right? If they went up and they had a little bit better vision, they could say, all right, let me clear this wave. And then it's just gone. And with the wave gone, that's four less minions that are coming to approach for the next fight. So definitely something that they can handle a little bit better. An opportunity, even in a you know 15k stomp that, that that this is, you still want to see them dotting their eyes and crossing their t's in a situation like that. Kanek Rooker showing how absurdly broken it is on Cassante, uh, and going back to Frozen Heart being the the best item, right? This was on day one of Cassante. Everyone was talking about Frozen Heart because it's giving armor, it's giving cooldowns, it's giving you mana to play around with. You're also jumping into the middle of the enemy team's fight. Uh, so Frozen Heart, just so good. And Koenig Rookun, just utterly broken. You're going into your uh, all-out form, but you're doing it with a massive shield to, to magic resist. Uh, like, where's the counterplay to this build, right? Bami Cinder for wave clear, you only do that. You stop there, and then you continue building the rest with the Frozen Heart and the Koenig. You see I'm buying Adaptive Helm, or is it, oh, sorry, Adaptive Helm is the TFT name. Jack Show the Protean to stack up on the resistances. <laughs> He'll be looking to proc that before he goes, goes all out in his fight so that he can have even more stats in that form. Look at this. He's just tanking up everything. They've barely done a dent to anything. Azir and Senna dealt more damage to each other than they dealt to the rest of the team combined. And this is sort of, you know, what's expected with over 10k gold lead. So I like that G2's pressing up in that situation. Now I like this spot too. You could you could put Cassante or LeBlanc into this. You basically want a mobile threat that can flank that can also not get wrapped on, right? Not get um 
ganked for being alone. LeBlanc fits that. So does so does Cassante. But Cassante has the added benefit of being a front line for your team. So you can step up with Varus and Renata and have that semblance of a front line. Beautiful angle on the ultimate uh, from the two of them. You see that you almost always want to have this interlacing of the Maokai and the Renata ults. So very neatly done there. Broken Blade saying, I'm massive. But yeah, uh, he's taking a big chunk of his damage here. W to move him out, uses R all out, and now it's just going to heal back up. Look at these shields. Look at this. It's just insane. Look how strong that champion is. All right, so we talked about the emotional roller coaster and how we expected that this team with four rookies might have some issues in game two and that we might have this confident team from G2 saying, no, like, all right, let's exert... Let's like re up our focus and renew and just play our best game possible and show them who's the boss. That's exactly what happened here. So, we're going to see for game three is Mad Lions able to reset their mental? The chances are probably not. They're on stage for the finals for the first time, right? Four of them are first time finalists. It's going to be difficult. How, how do you not get nervous about the pressure? And then you start thinking of Oh, man, like I'm making all these mistakes and I'm, you know, they just stomped us. And even when we won, we made mistakes. How do you reset? Find a way. Let's see if they can do it for game three.